Welcome back to Mr C's Biology. Forgive me for a clickbaity title, but today we're talking about hormones and I'll get on to what I mean by the title in a moment. We've talked a lot about nerves. Nerves are fast, quick response systems that give short term changes to things in your body. They're super helpful and we wouldn't be able to survive without them. But so are hormones. They're slower, they're long term, and they're really useful, but they're very different and serve a very different purpose in your body. Let's get to it and see what's going on. So your hormonal system is also known as the endocrine system, and it's a system of chemical messages sent that are carried in the blood, and they go round the body, and they have long-lasting effects that are slow to come on and slow to turn off. If we just imagine for a moment that our muscles were controlled by a hormonal system, that would mean that actually even just moving some muscles would take a really long time. And when you've moved them, actually it would take a really long time just to uncontract them and to move them back again. So it's great that we've got these two systems that can do two different things. Hormones are carried in the blood and they're released into the blood by an endocrine gland. So an endocrine gland excretes hormones directly into the blood and then it gets traveled around the blood until it gets to a target organ. So a target organ is where a hormone has its effect. Now these effects are all sorts of different things. If it's a sex hormone, then it could be something like causing puberty or making you fertile. Other hormones do things like control the amount of sugar that you've got in your blood. They make you need to urinate. They control your stress levels and so much more. If we zoom in on two for an example, we've got insulin and glucagon. Now insulin lowers blood glucose. It's released from the pancreas and it travels around the blood uh, and it lowers blood glucose by causing lots of different cells to increase their stores of glucose inside them. Now that store might be in the form of glycogen, a big molecule, sometimes referred to as animal starch because starch is another store of glucose that plants have, but insulin can cause more glycogen stores to be built. It might also increase the rate that glucose is used up in respiration and generally make cells more permeable to glucose. Glucagon, on the other hand, has, a, has the opposite effect. It's also released from the pancreas, but from a different type of cell, and they travel in the blood, and they also have effects on similar cells. But these, this time, instead of causing it to build up the stores of glycogen, it causes the stores of glycogen to break down and release more sugar, more glucose into the blood. It also does things like making the cells less permeable to glucose, so they don't absorb as much glucose as they would have before, and you end up with higher blood sugar levels. Now, glucagon is used in situations such as when you're doing some exercise and need to be able to get more glucose readily available for the muscles, whereas insulin is used when you've had situations like eating a meal and you've just had a spike in blood sugar and then you need to get that under control. But it's normal that both these hormones switch on and off and control. Neither of them is completely on or completely off at any one time, but both of them work in tandem to make sure that the blood sugar level stays within a very, very close range. And that's part of homeostasis, making sure that your body is controlled within a certain set of parameters. And so in the homeostasis video that I made, we talked all about temperature control, but in this case, blood sugar control is just as important. Now back to my clickbaity title, let me explain what's going on there. There are two hormones that sort out hunger, leptin and ghrelin. A bit like insulin and glucagon, they work in tandem and ghrelin increases hunger and leptin decreases it. So when you're hungry, really what's going on is there is a hormone sending a signal to your brain telling you that you need to eat and that's what gives you the sensation of hunger. So because leptin decreases hunger, there was once a thought that it would be able to be used as a treatment for obesity. However, we now know that actually it's not effective in that place, often because someone who is obese um, has been eating for a long time and so has developed a leptin resistance in the same way that someone who's diabetic with type 2 diabetes might be insulin resistant. There are still things that are sold on the internet as a leptin supplement, but actually, uh, as someone who is a diabetic and takes insulin will tell you, um, because these hormones are proteins, um, you can't take them as a supplement into your digestive system, into your mouth, 
because you have enzymes that break down proteins. And so in the same way that you'd break down the protein in an egg or nuts or meat, then in the same way you will also break down the proteins of insulin if you took it as a tablet or a supplement that way. And instead, if for insulin, you have to have an injection of insulin and it would be the same for leptin. Leptin can treat some rare cases of obesity when they are obese because they have a leptin deficiency. But on the whole, that's not often the main cause of obesity. Hopefully that's been helpful and hopefully you've learned a little bit more about hunger and about hormones that control lots of processes in your body. If you like this video, don't forget to click the thumbs up button and to subscribe if you like the idea of some more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.